Climate Watch, Wired's January cover story is taking readers far into the mostly unknown, all the way to Antarctica's Twaits Glacier. The story, The Race to Understand Antarctica's Most Terrifying Glacier, looks at the science being used to understand the giant glacier and hopefully slow its collapse. The Thwaites Glacier is comparable to the size of Florida, and scientists say that it's having an impact on rising sea levels and has impacts that can even change the course of civilization. So John Gertner is the author of that story in Wired, and he's also working on his second book about the melting of the Greenland ice sheet, which will be out this summer. That's interesting. Boy, you like to spend time in cold places. I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so let's talk about this glacier, which I didn't know anything about. So give us the basics. What do we know about it? It's very hard to get to, actually. Only about two dozen people have ever been there in all of history. And it's, there are three things I think worth knowing about Thwaites are, one, it's really large. It's the size of Florida or the size of Great Britain. So it contains an immense amount of ice. And the second thing is that it's unstable. Um, warm ocean waters are eroding the bottom of it so that it's starting to pull back and retreat and collapse into the ocean. The third thing is that it's interconnected with all these other glaciers in the same area of the sea and if Thwaites goes then all of those can go as well. So we're talking anywhere of several feet of sea level rise to a worst case scenario of something like 10 feet of sea level rise. Hmm. So in your report, uh, Wired says the demise of this glacier could rise by more than a dozen feet. And this is a quote, when that happens, goodbye Miami, goodbye Boston. It's really stark. Uh, it, it's stark, it's terrifying. Um, uh, Shreeder Ananda Krishnan, who's the main scientist in my story, talks about it as the world's most terrifying glacier. Uh, I think time is really important to understand in this situation. It's not like it's going to slide into the sea right away. And the scientists that are studying this and that are going to spend the next five years working on trying to understand it better are trying to figure out how fast can this thing move into the ocean. You do a really good job at sort of describing just how massive this is and the challenges when it comes to the technology being used to understand what's happening. Can you talk a little bit about the technology? Sure. I, and one reason it's hard to study is it's really hard to get to Thwaites. Yeah. It's 800 miles from McMurdo Station. So this is a really remote place. And when you describe mm. getting to McMurdo Station, which is really, really remote, I thought, okay, that's it. And then you write, <laughs> right. and that's not it. There's more to go. Right. Yeah. It's just a, a, stop, a stopping place on the way to go somewhere farther. Uh, there's a $50 million scientific effort. It's a coalition between the United States scientists and uh, Great Britain. They're doing all sorts of different tests. Some, are, some of these scientists are looking at the water in front of the edge of Thwaites to see how it's warming. Uh, the group that I focused on are using literally bombs, explosives, that they're bearing into the ice about 50 or 100 feet. Um, they track the seismic waves. So what happens is they dig a big hole, they put a small explosive in, they cover it up with snow, they explode it, and they track the waves as they go to the bottom of the ice sheet and then back to the surface. And by doing this, they can kind of understand what's under the glacier. And if they can understand that, they might be able to tell us how fast it's gonna slide back. So here's the million dollar question. How much time do we have and is there anything we can do to stop it? We don't know how much time we have. One hope is that the next five years, the Thwaites collaboration will give us some answers. They can put in some data into these models to help us understand how fast this can really happen. Uh, the two things we can do are, one, stop putting so much CO2 in the atmosphere. That's the big one. Uh, but there are some other sort of riskier moonshot ideas that maybe we can do some kind of engineering fixes. These are really speculative at the moment, but maybe we can build something to protect this glacier from warm water. But at the moment, the best thing we can do is, is, is to try and uh, uh, do better in terms of moving our economy to putting less greenhouse gases into the air. Um, it's a great article, John. Um, it's in Wired, and of course, that book's coming out this summer. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining Thank us. You. Thank you both.